Hello everybody, welcome to Open Source Pro Tips. My name is Lauren Gates and I have been working in the Asterisk Free PBX ecosystem now for more than 10 years. For the last five years as a support engineer for Sangoma Technologies. I'd like to share a little bit of what I've learned with you today for the Free PBX Firewall. Here we see a brand new Free PBX install. I'm using version 15, but everything we're discussing here today works the same in versions 13 and 14. The first thing you see after the Free PBX firewall module has been installed is a splash screen. This is what we're looking at here. This is telling you the module is installed but not configured. Clicking continue at this point proceeds with the configuration wizard. We can step through the questions, such as the first one asking me if you want to whitelist the host you're browsing from. We say yes. Would you like to whitelist the, the network you're browsing from? In this case, I'm saying no. Do you want to enable responsive? I'll say no right now, but we'll revisit that decision later. At this point, we have the option to abort the setup or proceed with the changes. It applies the changes. Firewall is now installed, running, and has a very basic configuration based on the wizard. We can browse to the firewall module from the connectivity menu. We see the introductory setting screen where we can disable it or rerun the wizard. There's a responsive tab where we can control the responsive firewall settings. The interfaces tab where we see all the interfaces enumerated on the PBX. In this case, there's only the one. And the networks tab where we define our network rules that provide access to the system. Let's continue with our configuration of the networks tab. The firewall wizard has left us with a single rule that allows me to connect from my IP address, but there's no other access rules for others. I want to add those now. Let's suppose I have a user working remotely from home and I know their IP address is fixed. I can add that here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I could choose the zone that they're going to be assigned to as a normal phone user, it will be the local zone. I can add a note and I can hit save. Any user connecting from that IP will have whatever access I can assign to the local zone. I can also add FQDNs. If I have a remote office, the IP of which resolves from an FQDN, I can add it here. So a New York office dot example dot com can connect by adding a rule to New York dot example dot com. Let's suppose I have a remote administrator connecting from again another fixed IP by five six six seven seven eight eight. I'll add them not to internet, not to local, but to the trusted zone. They have slightly higher permissions. Uh, this PBX is a public IP, but if I had a VPN such that users were connecting over the VPN, I might wish to whitelist the entire 10 0, 0, 0, slash 8 range and assign that to the local zone and I would do that by creating this room. And so on, one by one, until I have all the rules necessary to provide access on the networks tab. Let's talk about the interfaces tab. The wizard has classified the only interface as internet. This is normally what we want. If we pop down the menu for the different zones that we can set the interface to, we'll notice that in addition to internet, 
we have local, other, reject, and trusted. If the firewall configuration is incomplete, it is very common that the interface is set to trusted. If I do that and update the interface, then quickly browse over to the dashboard, we will see an error. Firewall configuration, it shows an X and hovering over that will say trusted interface detected. This is a misconfiguration. That dashboard error is telling you that by default, all inbound IP traffic on the interface is marked as trusted. As the firewall works as a deny by default, this is basically saying all inbound traffic bypasses the firewall and none of the rules are being followed. The correct configuration for inbound traffic on interfaces where there is the possibility of untrusted traffic is internet. By default, all inbound IP traffic on this internet on this interface will be zoned to the internet zone and it is then rezoned to more permissive zones using the rules I've defined on the networks tab. Critically important to get this set properly. It's also important to set each individual interface correctly if you have more than one. Now that I've set E0 to internet and I browse back to the dashboard, we will no longer see an error associated with the firewall. The dashboard is clean. Okay, with our basic configuration done, we have the interface set such that all inbound traffic is zoned internet by default, and we have a handful of rules that allows access from specific hosts. This works as a whitelist, but what if you can't whitelist the IP in advance? In situations where you have road warriors, people connecting from behind dynamic IP addresses, or other circumstances, we have the responsive firewall. If you are unable to whitelist an IP address in advance of a connection, you use the responsive firewall. If you have no need of this feature, it's best to leave it disabled. It's very simple to use. We click the enable button and we choose specific protocols that we want to allow public access to. Let's assume that we have two road warriors connecting to existing PJSIP extensions on this PBX. So I will enable the responsive firewall only for PJSIP. So generally the firewall is denied by default. If responsive firewall is enabled, it will allow a limited number of SIP registrations from untrusted IPs. If that registration is successful, the IP address is whitelisted and it's added to the local zone so that they can access other resources on the PBX. If the registration from the unknown IP address fails, then the IP address is banned by the firewall. Throughout this tutorial, you've seen me assign zones to different hosts to different interfaces. And I've told you that the zones determine what level of access that inbound traffic has to the services running on the system. Let's see where that's configured. We open the flyout menu on the right and click services. It opens up a new series of tabs. The first two tabs lists all the individual services running on the PBX and each one has individual toggles that allow us to provide access to those specific services. Taking SSH as an example, by default SSH is accessible from the local zone and no other. As SSH is critically important, you would never allow internet access, for example. The next one, Web Management and Web Management Secure, 
This is where you determine which zones have access to the admin GUI login for free PBX, what we're looking at now. Standard practice is to deny access from any untrusted traffic, so we set those to the local zone. The UCP, the user control panel, is allowed access to the internet zone by default. That is, you do not have to whitelist IP addresses prior to them accessing this service. By default, all inbound traffic is zoned internet, and by default, the internet zone has access to UCP. If you want to limit access only to trusted hosts, you can do that here by toggling the internet zone off. As we've previously enabled the responsive firewall for the SIP protocol, it says it is being managed by responsive. You should not enable access from the internet zone. So responsive allows a limited amount of registration attempts from the internet zone, and this allows full access from anything that's already in the local zone. We leave that the way it is. The ChanSIP protocol by default is access only from local trusted hosts, as does IAX WebRTC. If we were using Let's Encrypt to set up HTTPS TLS certs, we would set that up here and it would be important to enable the internet zone for Let's Encrypt for certificate renewal. The next tab over has more services. I'll go over a couple of them. Very important, your provisioning services. You generally only allow access to trusted hosts to the provisioning services. If you absolutely must provide untrusted access, you would do so using the most secure methods and make sure that you have credentials set on your HTTP provisioning service. TFTP service is another one that's commonly used for provisioning phones. It is critically important never to allow untrusted access to TFTP. If you have the internet zone accessible to TFTP, this is a misconfiguration. This says the entire world has access to the TFTP service and it's possible for them to download your phone provisioning files without credentials. You must protect that service and leave it zoned local. If you have any other services running on the system that are not enumerated in the previous two tabs, you can add them here as a, as, a, as a custom service and pick the zones that you want to provide access to. The last tab is a blacklist, which is of limited value. As it's denied by default by design, you don't really have to blacklist any addresses, but you can do so here if you wish. And that's it for basic configuration. Let's quickly recap. Open the flyout menu on the right, browse to main. We have the networks tab. This is our whitelist. We can set all the rules that allow access to the system. We have the interfaces tab. Generally you set this once and it's critically important you get this set correctly so that all untrusted traffic arrives on interfaces that are zoned internet. We have the responsive firewall if it's needed. You enable it here and enable it only for the protocols that you need. Individual services are controlled here. And here. Blacklist is here. If you have any more questions, there is a comprehensive write-up about the free PBX firewall at wiki.freepbx.org. Search for firewall. And you will see pages and pages of information here. A very good starting place is firewall getting started guide. 
We have screen caps and rules in more detail than what I just described.